And what are some of the common misconceptions about anxiety? Because for those who don't experience it, it's very easy to say, oh, well, just, you know, get over it or put it out of your mind or, you know, don't worry about the things. 95% of them are never going to happen. I mean, all of that sounds, it's true. It's, but. I think, I think for me, the biggest misconception of people, I mean, there's many, but the biggest one, the number one misconception that people have is that anxiety, that they shouldn't have any anxiety. Mm. Okay. Anxiety is a natural emotion. Mm. It's there to protect us. If, you know, a, a mother is supposed to experience some anxiety about where her baby that is just starting to crawl is putting their fingers. Yes. That is normal. That is good. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not normal if she can't sleep because she's freaking out about the baby dying next to her. <laughs> that, that's become a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, you know, at a normal level it's a of anxiety, of it's, it's fine. And, uh, so how do you know what's normal and what's not? It's are you able to function? Is this serving you or yeah. is it getting in the way of good functioning? By the so, way, the other misconception is that anxiety is a force on its own and people have no control. As an anxiety PhD self-suffering expert, I can guarantee you the anxiety was mostly created by me not controlling how I was looking at the world. Mm. Okay? That was one aspect. The other aspect had to do with the food that I was getting, that it was impacting my gut. Mm-hmm. So it was a bit of, of both. Mm. But the number one was my mindset and how I was looking at the world. Mm. So anxiety is not is not a monster that has a that has a grip over you. Mm. It's a tool that you're we are not using uh, adequately. Yeah. And this is really important. Um, I remember an interaction I saw in a workplace recently because it can be something as simple as the language that we use around anxiety. And what happened was the manager was you know, very much aware of mental health and well-being, which is great and fantastic. And they knew that this staff member had problems with anxiety from time to time. And so compassionately, very caringly, and, you know, she was checking in with this staff member every day how's your anxiety today? And it was meant to be supportive, but as a psychologist, I looked at this and went, ah, okay, if you really understand what's going on here, what we're doing is you're encouraging the worker to check in physically and mentally, internally for them and go, where where is, first of all, my anxiety as if it's like something that you own and that you cling to and that it is is almost a part of you. And so where is it at today? And immediately you start looking for it and you start searching. Oh, there it is. You know, what you look for, you'll find. That's a bad idea. (laughs) So there it is. Oh, yes. And today it's at a 7 or it's an 8 or it's a 10 or it's a 4 or whatever it might be. But immediately you start over-monitoring it and that's going to make it worse for the person. Not just that, but then they start talking about it. And so they get to have a lovely, you know, conversation, rapport building conversation between the two, but you emphasize it by focusing on it. Mm. So we, one of the things we, we did was sort of educating the manager around what are other ways that you can show that support and show that care that aren't going to actually make the anxiety worse for the person. Um, so it's a real change in thinking that's mm. required sometimes, but just yeah. something as simple as the language that we use can yeah. have a big impact. And it, it, I think not a day goes by when I talk to a manager that is having problems with their staff in which I walk away thinking that at least 20% of 10 to 20%, not a lot, Mm. but just some key words they're using on an everyday basis is contributing to the negative results that they're getting. They're really good managers. Yes. They're really good managers. And And beautiful people that care because otherwise they wouldn't be talking to me. Yeah. Or even putting up with me because I talk very frankly. Um, so these are, these are really good people and really skillful, really prepared, but they have a blind spot yeah. as to certain words that they're using that is contributing to the anxiety of the team. And you don't know what you don't know. No, you don't know. And this um, is where we come in yeah. to train them. Yeah. And, and they do. And this is why people report such good results from mm-hmm. our, from mm-hmm. our workshops mm-hmm. because they walk away saying, Oh, simple was, changes that I can make yeah. that are going to have a big impact. I can't believe I was team. using these words and or I was thinking this way. So you said before, you know, sometimes people say, you know, 95% of the things that you're afraid of don't come true. And if you say that flippantly, that's a bad thing to say. But you know what? 
that was a very useful thing for me mm -hmm. to, it was a sobering thought. Because what am I afraid about? You know, if most of the things I'm afraid about won't come true, why do I even give them time or space? Mm -hmm. You know, so that was deal with them when they happen, yeah. if they happen. You know? If they happen, but they're most mm -hmm. likely not going to happen ever. Mm -hmm. And and another a coach once helped me sober up a little bit because I was think he says think of, I was talking about a problem. He said, okay, well let's say that what you are afraid of happens exactly how mm -hmm. you're thinking. What then? Okay, okay. <laughs> he said, and what's the problem then? Oh, and I thought, oh, okay. I, I, I hadn't thought about that one. I was focusing on the first problem, but not if it actually happened. So I thought, okay, well, I guess if that problem happens, I'll be destitute, I'll be on the street. And he continued, and what's the problem then? Mm. Oh, shit, I hadn't thought about that yeah. one. Um, so if I'm destitute, I guess I'll look for a bridge. Okay, so what's the problem to then? To sleep under. <laughs> sleep under. Well, the first, <laughs> but I don't, I mean, I'm exaggerating. I could, I could go to a friend's house. I'm sure for one night that would be okay. Yeah. So I started finding yeah. solutions to the, the worst thing. problem that could happen. This is what we, and it was great. We do the what if exercise. Yeah. And so mm. what if that does happen? What if? What's your, mm. oh, well, I have a plan. Because what if I lose my job? Well, I would get another one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it might even be better than the last one. And, and people, too often we end at what if and we don't actually answer the question. question. We just say, what if? Oh, what the, and then anxiety mm. instead of actually going, oh, okay, I have a plan now if that was to happen. Yeah. So I, I've, and that then I can put it aside. Yeah. But this is interesting. That ability to put it aside is, is crucial because, uh, and this kind of relates to some of the gender differences that we see. So st statistically speaking, um, women tend to experience more anxiety than men. Now there's questions around is it just women are more likely to talk about it or to express it in a way where they get a diagnosis, but let's say for let's say that it is a real uh, significant difference in the actual experience of anxiety. We also know that the way women's brains work, there's more connections between the different parts of the brain. So one topic relates to another, relates to another, relates to another, and it's very easy to get caught in these rumination patterns. Yeah. Whereas men, and I'm speaking generally here, yeah. of course, there's yeah, always course. exceptions, men generally are better able to compartmentalize and put something in a box and file it away. That's actually a really good skill that could benefit all of us to learn yeah. how to do that. Now, of course, sometimes we need to go and open the box again and do some work with it. But that ability to focus your mind on where you want it to go, I think is the core of dealing with anxiety. See, this is where I was failing most of my life. <laughs> if I was anxious, I couldn't even sleep. I was not able to compartmentalize anything, mm -hmm. you know, so it would, it would all get mangled up, you know. And that, that's it, why so the, the anxiety. Problem, yes, and, absolutely. And this is the challenge because sometimes it's everything is easier said than done, but it's a practice and it can mm. be achieved. It's absolutely and, a practice. I mean, yeah. someone who's in the, the grips of an, a panic attack and anxiety to say, you know, control yourself, mm. <sighs> You know, that's not going to help. But outside of those states, practicing that ability to direct your attention to, all right, I'm going to lean into the what if question, or I'm going to stay present in the here and now, or to be able to direct that focus is mm. crucial. Mm. And, and, you know, from life experience, I'd have to say that there's no silver bullet mm. and there's nothing, not a complete wrong way to do it. I have seen some people react really well from somebody coming and say, stop it right now and they've gone the shock okay, <laughs> the shock, shock factor have stopped them it's a pattern you know? interrupt. And some people go that would never work that would make it worse yeah well some people that would make it worse but for some people it works mm. so don't don't knock anything out yeah. because it doesn't work for you it doesn't mean it doesn't work for the rest of humanity yeah it just means it doesn't work for you find something else or it doesn't work for you at this point in time yeah that's right that's, sometimes that's something you've work. tried before mm. didn't work then but it does now because yeah. things change we change to, to me the miracle thing for me uh if i have to look at one thing that has helped me uh, was gratitude lists mm. i did them for five years straight mm -hmm. every single night mm -hmm. And that was a game changer because mm. it taught my brain to focus on the nice things in a room, the nice <laughs> things in people, the nice things in life. And, and studies have shown Oft. that the moment that you teach your brain to focus on the nice things, yeah. it forgets how yeah. to do anxiety so yeah. well. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good thing. Absolutely. You know. That's so that's what worked with me. Some people say, Oh, I hate gravity list. Well, well and it's good. sounds you hate them, but but so that works for me. It sounds know. so simple and so cheesy, but it's like it's proven. Not. It's hardcore evidence. Hardcore that psychology says, behind it, right? Do it with your kids. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.